Ik ga een beetje... Oké. First of all, we have the muscles of mastication. The temporalis muscle, arising from the floor of the temporal fossa, and attaching to the neck of the mandible, which is removed here. Then, another muscle of mastication is the lateral pterygoid muscle. It arises by two heads from the greater wing of the sphenoid and the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Then there is the medial pterygoid muscle, which also arises by two heads from the medial surface of the lateral pterygoid and from the tuberosity of the maxilla or from the tuber. This muscle is not a muscle of mastication, it is the buccinator muscle, which arises from the maxilla, from the mandible below, and from the pterygomandibular ligament behind. The, third, the fourth muscle of mastication is seen on this side. This is the masseter muscle. It arises from the zygomatic arch and attaches to the lateral surface of the ramus of the mandible. As for the muscles which are related to the hyoid bone, uh, first we have the suprahyoid muscles. This is the digastric muscle. It has an anterior belly, which is attached to the body of the mandible in the midline, and it has a posterior belly, which is attached to the mastoid process. In between, they are attached by an intermediate tendon, which is held by a fascial process behind to the hyoid bone in front. Another suprahyoid muscle is the mylohyoid. This is the mylohyoid, part of the mylohyoid, actually. If we can see a better sample of it here. Well, it's not visible. Anyways, this very, uh, the most uh, lower muscle, or the lowest muscle here, is the mylohyoid. It arises from the mandible, and it uh, from the mylohyoid line, and it attaches to the hyoid bone. The other a suprahyoid muscle is the geniohyoid, which arises from the inferior mental spine and attaches to the hyoid bone. Then we come to the infrahyoid muscles. Again, we have four. The first one, the most obvious here, is the omohyoid. It has two bellies, a superior belly arising from the hyoid bone and an inferior belly arising from the scapula and the suprascapular ligament. They are attached by an intermediate tendon which is held by a fascial sling to the clavicle. All right. Then uh, the second infrahyoid muscle is the sternohyoid, which arises from the sternum and part of the clavicle as well. The, uh, it attaches to the hyoid bone, which is removed, uh, which is not visible. The upper part is removed here. This thin muscle behind the omohyoid is the thyrohyoid muscle. It arises from the oblique line on the lamina of the thyroid cartilage and attaches to the hyoid bone. And below the sternohyoid, there is the sternothyroid. The sternothyroid arises from the sternum and attaches to the oblique line on the lamina of the thyroid cartilage. So that's four infrahyoid muscles. Then we have the three scalene muscles. This is the anterior scalene which attaches to the first rib. This behind it is the middle scalene. And this one behind it is supposed to be the posterior scalene. And one way to recognize the anterior scalene is by this nerve that passes over it, which is the phrenic nerve. It is characteristic of both of them. Okay. Behind the po posterior scalene, we have the um, levator scapulae muscle. It is usually uh, divided into two parts, so you can recognize it. These are not two separate muscles. This is both levator scapulae attached, uh, attached to the scapula. And of course, on this side, all of you know the sternocleidomastoid. It's hidden by the platysmal muscle, which arises from the pectoral and deltoid fascia, and it attaches to the body of the mandible and angle of the mouth. All right. Now, if we move on to the branches of the cervical plexus. First of all, uh, the greater occipital nerve, this one, this is not a branch of the cervical plexus because it arises from the posterior ramus of the second cervical nerve, while the 
cervical plexus is from the anterior rami. So the very first branch we encounter here is the lesser occipital nerve. Okay, this is the lesser occipital nerve arising from the anterior ramus of C2. Then anterior to it, there is the great auricular nerve from C2 and C3. And you can see that uh, if the platysma is removed, all of these nerves wind around the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Uh, anterior, uh, below the great auricular nerve, there is supposed to be the transverse cervical, which emerges here. There are the transverse cutaneous nerve. It arises from the posterior surface of the sternocleidomastoid in the middle, and it crosses it anteriorly to supply the anterior and lateral surfaces of the neck. So this is a part or the uh, emerging part of the transverse cutaneous nerve. Below these, we have the supraclavicular nerves, the medial, intermediate, and lateral. And these supply the area over the chest. And the, of course, the posterior one also goes to the back. Here we can see blood vessels. The uh, major one, this is the external carotid artery, dividing or terminating into its two terminal branches, the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal. The, this branch is the posterior auricular branch of the external carotid artery. Okay. This is the occipital artery, another branch of the external carotid. If we go further down, we may see some of the branches. This is the uh, superior thyroid, okay? Uh, this one is most likely the ascending pharyngeal. And, uh, okay, let's see. Anything else? Yes, the facial artery. This is a continuation of the facial artery. This is the, uh, okay, you can see that uh, the facial artery arises from here. Then it winds up the angle of the mandible uh, anterior to the masseter muscle in a tortuous course, and then it ascends to the side of the nose, and it terminates by uh, anastomosing with the supraorbital, supratrochlear, and supraorbital uh, branches of the internal carotid artery. That's the termination of the facial artery. As for the veins, of course, we can see the external jugular vein, uh, and it is joined by the subclavian vein to form the brachiocephalic trunk. Okay, what else? Nerve. Nerves? These are the brachial plexus. Because you see the anterior scalene and you see the middle scalene, the nerves emerging from them, joining and pa passing with the subclavian artery, are of course the roots of the brachial plexus, forming the, uh, you know, the trunk, the, cord, uh, the divisions in the cords later. Um, yeah, that's very good. This is the spinal root of the accessory nerve, this one. How do you recognize it? It goes to the back to supply the sternocleider, which was supposed to be here, and of course the trapezius. Okay, anything else? Oh, yes, the vagus nerve. Uh, we, or, uh, we previously mentioned the phrenic nerve. We say, how do you uh, recognize the phrenic nerve? It lies directly on top of the scalenus anterior. Anyways. Uh, the vagus. I'll plug it in. Anyways, uh, this is the vagus nerve between the internal jugular vein and the uh, common carotid artery, which later divides uh, to its two terminal. Uh, no, this is. Basha. No, this is the external carotid artery. The internal carotid is on the inside. Yes, it's supposed to be uh, deep down there, because this is the, uh, the, the, the superior thyroid branch, so it's the external uh, carotid. But anyways, this is the vagus nerve, okay? And uh, next to it, uh, as they say, this is the descending branch of the hypoglossal nerve, which, joins, uh, which is supposed to join with the descending cervical nerve to form the enzocervicalis. So this is the enzocervicalis here. And of course, you can recognize it by the fact that it supplies three of the infrahyoid muscles. We said this is what? This is uh, sternothyroid, right? This is sternohyoid. And we also have omohyoid. So it's close to all three of them, and it supplies them. And we said thyrohyoid, of course, is supplied by a separate branch. It's probably this branch. Yes, this is the nerve to thyrohyoid.
okay, from the hypoglossal nerve. Okay. Uh, is it, are they visible? Where? Uh, we said this is the, uh, the hypoglossal, this one. Yes, it's a division of it, but... Uh -huh. Well, where does it go? Do I see the Take those bills, Sanjay. Pause it, All right. So, uh, my decision of the higher jury, this is the corded tympani nerve, a branch of the facial nerve, which joins <laughs> the lingual nerve here, going to the tongue, the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And, of course, this is the inferior alveolar. As you know, it goes into the mandibular foramen to enter the mandibular canal and emerge here on the, uh, in the mental foramen as the mental nerve. Okay. As for the nerves of the face, uh, this is the supra... Okay. This here is the external nasal nerve. Uh, it's supposed to emerge... Uh, this one. This one is the external nasal. It, is emer it emerges between the nasal bone and the upper nasal cartilage. But this one is the infratrochlear nerve. Okay? This one. This is supratrochlear. This one is infratrochlear. All right? Mm -hmm. And this one is the external nasal. As for this one, this is the infraorbital nerve. And you know that uh, it comes from the maxillary nerve. This is the maxillary nerve. First, it emerges from the inferior orbital fissure. This is the inferior orbital fissure. It ascends into the inferior orbital fissure. Then it enters into this, the infraorbital groove and canal leading to the infraorbital foramen. So this is the termination of the maxillary nerve. Okay, this is for this part. Anything else? Hmm. Oh, no, to trunky break up like Oh, no, 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 spinal root accessory nerve. And do I know it's you? Oh, cervical plexus, People. And do I know cervical plexus, huh? Yeah, this is fine, it takes us at dinner. I'm going to break up, break up, break up, break up. Muscles of facial expression. We previously talked about the muscles of mastication. Now, the first muscle here, uh, which is not technically a muscle uh, you know, included in the muscles of facial expression, but it is part of it. This is the uh, frontalis, the, uh, uh, the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis uh, muscle, which raises the eyebrows. Uh, then the, this big muscle is the orbicularis oculi. Of course, it has two parts. This is the palpebral part, which gently closes the eyelids. And this is the orbital part, which throws the skin around the orbit into folds. So it closes the eyes tightly. Now, uh, we have the muscles of the lips. First, the muscle that closes the lip is the orbicularis oris. Okay? This single muscle. But the muscles that separate the lips and
Okay, for the muscles at the back of the neck, uh, you, you may have heard something different, but uh, according to my opinion, this is semispinalis capitis, this muscle here, okay? This is splenius capitis, this one. And the one below it is the levator scapulae. So here, the scalenes, none of them is supposed to be visible. They're all hidden by the platysma. Because if you go to the other sample, again, this is semispinalis capitis. This is splenius capitis. This is the levator scapulae. Then we have the scalenes uh, posterior, medius, and anterior. Okay? I don't know.